Hello, my name is Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. On this show, we talk about everything related to heavy metal and chemical toxicity and detoxification. And you can learn all about that as well on my website on MyersDetox.com where we have hundreds of podcasts and hundreds of articles on the subject. Today, we have my friend Julie Donaldson on the show. And she's a brilliant practitioner and she's gonna be teaching us about fatty liver disease and why non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is on the rise and dangerous, but totally preventable and totally reversible. She'll talk about her techniques on the show today about how she reverses fatty liver disease and improves uh, liver enzyme markers on tests, the supplements that she uses and the protocols and what not to have success in helping people reverse this condition. Uh, we also talk about the prevalence in children and how that's growing and how there's genetic markers passed on from parent to child that can uh, you know, cause the child to be more prone and at risk to developing fatty liver disease. Uh, we also uh, talk about a lot of different subjects related to uh, blood sugar control and, and why poor diet and poor blood sugar control are you know, a cause of fatty liver disease. We talk about all the livers and many different functions and how those can break down when people have fatty liver disease and so many more uh, fascinating topics about liver health. And I know you guys listening to this show are really concerned about your heavy metal toxicity levels, the levels of chemicals and metals in your body and how that's impacting your health and you reaching your health goals and living the life that you want to live and feel good. So I created a quiz called heavymetalsquiz.com. You can go there, take this quiz, just a few questions about your lifestyle factors and diet. And based on those results, we can determine your relative levels of high, medium, or low levels of toxins in your body. After you take the quiz, you get a free video series, including heavy metals and toxins testing, and generally the mistakes to avoid when you're detoxing and a whole wealth of education just by taking this quiz. So go check it out at heavymetalsquiz.com. Our guest today is Julie Donaldson. She has over 37 years of experience in the healing arts. As a practitioner of metabolic typing, individualized nutrition, functional health testing, biomeridian assessment, and massage therapy, she brings a broad knowledge base for the partnership between herself and her clients. She's dedicated to the discovery of the whole person in the healing journey, helping clients to establish supportive core beliefs and daily practices to achieve their health goals. Her commitment to ecology and the environment is longstanding and protection of nature's resources and the consumption of the cleanest, most potent foods possible allows the continuum of healing to happen from soil to plate to body. A gardener and activist for soil replenishment, Julie maintains very high standards for our earth, food, and lifestyle. Julie's own experience with illness and a need for integrative solutions contributes to a great understanding to what people are experiencing when they're ill and how to achieve this balance. She's praised as an excellent listener and investigator, and she brings the compassion of a person who's been significantly ill to the table in the most meaningful way when she's working with her clients. You can learn more about Julie and work with her at True Nature Health consulting.com. Julie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Always good to be with you, Wendy. Yes, I love how you on. You're such a wealth of knowledge, just such an amazing practitioner. And I just, I love the way that you kind of just lay out the information so simply, the complex information. Um, but today we're going to be talking about the fatty liver epidemic that's happening. And, um, you know, I, I think it's just so important to talk about. There's a lot of people walking around that have fatty liver and don't know it. So, but before yeah. we get into that, why don't you tell us your story and how you got into health? Sure. Well, it's been a long, long time. Uh, I've been doing this for 
uh, several decades. And I actually got into natural health practices through um, initially a lot of trauma in my life, a lot of loss. I lost uh, three very significant people within months of each other when I was 20 years old. Started to suffer kind of immobility and depression and um, no amount of talking was helping and uh, I had my first professional massage and a lot of body-mind connecting went on in that and I got up off that uh, with a lightened uh, state of being that was pretty profound for me and uh, I was on a course to do clinical psychology and shifted courses to start studying um, uh, first massage therapy and then uh, nutrition and natural health uh, practices, uh, functional medicine, all of that uh, stuff. And, you know, a number of years later fell into a health crisis of my own uh, physically that uh, wasn't lifting and was multi-layered and quite complex. And um, fortunately, through uh, the support of a really talented practitioner, was able to start turning that around. And um, yeah, so that just brought a lot more passion to the whole story for me to understand uh, how, in many ways, unbeknownst to us, things are building in our bodies and we're being exposed to things that are contributing to illness in our bodies and, and we're unaware. So it's been very important to me, as I know it is to you too, uh, over the years, to help people understand how to be on the preventive side of getting in that kind of situation because, uh, of course, it's always easier to prevent and or quickly reverse versus getting knee-deep in a disease and, and uh, being much more challenged to get out. Yes, so, you don't want to wait until you have a diagnosis to start thinking about your health. Like, don't wait for that wake up call where you're faced with, yeah. you know, mortality to yeah. then begin thinking about your health. I'm sure most people listening to this podcast are, are pretty sophisticated and thinking yeah. about detox and have really advanced in their their journey and knowledge set to go beyond just diet and, and biohacking. They're really focused on this. This is kind of the last, uh, the last step in the journey for a lot of people, I think. Uh, yeah. So, so important to talk about the liver and liver health, because if your liver cannot clean your body, you're in trouble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's let's dive in um, about the liver and um, just just a quick description for our, our listeners on what this disease is. Okay, it it is essentially the replacement of healthy liver cells by fat cells in the liver, which are non-functional. Uh, they they do not have the fat cells do not have the capacity to perform the tasks that um, normal healthy liver cells are going to perform. And there are a multitude of those, right? Um, the, the liver is probably the most diverse organ in the body and detoxification is right up at the top of its uh, <laughs> indispensable functions, correct? Then we have a lot of digestion, uh, digestive uh, functions that are going on through the liver, amino acid conjugation, fatty acid and cholesterol synthesis, blood sugar regulation. A lot of people don't understand that the liver is absolutely critical to uh, their blood sugar regulation. And um, the, the, the liver is also producing bile, which is very important for fat emulsification in the digestive process, as it is important for bringing processed to toxins. The liver will store toxins in the bile to be removed when the body goes into uh, a digestion process. And... Um, all of these functions become compromised in a condition of uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because, again, we have fat cells instead of healthy functioning liver cells that are super complex in what they do, okay? 
So also the liver has to store iron and vitamin D, uh, very important uh, in this whole scenario as well. Uh, it stores um, uh, important enzymes for detoxification like CYP and GGT, uh, which are needed for hormone uh, chemical detoxification, heavy metal detoxification. So clearly, uh, th this is uh, not a good scenario um, when these fat cells begin to take over the liver, essentially. Yeah, and this is not just a concern for alcoholics or people that are drinking lots of alcohol. They can eventually, or, you know, uh, you typically face with fatty liver disease after years and years of drinking alcohol. But what's on the rise is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Right. And so let's talk about like why this disease is increasing in prevalence, especially in children. Yeah. Um, and, and that is a really alarming situation. It's not surprising though, because this, this is now um, a, a development on top of diseases and conditions that we've seen developing in our population for decades now. Okay. Um, uh, overweight uh, conditions are right up at the top of the list. Uh, blood sugar dysregulations, diabetes, um, and all of this is on the rise in our kids. Uh, last statistics were that over 18% of our children are now overweight. And one in five teenagers and 25% of young adults uh, are pre-diabetic. <laughs> and uh, a large percentage of those very likely to become full-blown diabetics. Again, especially if we're not working on the side of, of prevention. Uh, diet, of course, is a big issue. And it's not just an issue for people who are always overeating junk foods. Um, we are understanding about uh, uh, fatty liver disease, the non-alcoholic form, of course, we're talking about again, um, can be caused by simple fuel overload, okay? Over-consuming any of our nutrients, including protein, not just carbohydrates and fats, which, which are ones that I think most people are more aware of in terms of contributing to these other major diseases that have been with us for a long time. So we're no longer just talking about, um, you know, optimizing weight and, and getting diabetes under control. We are now seeing this liver problem, uh, which is complicated also by toxins, okay? And we all know that they are ever increasing. Uh, so for many decades, these, these other concerns have been building in our young populations in all populations, but the increase is uh, much more dramatic in young people than it is in older people at this point. And so now we're adding on this layer of dysfunctional liver <laughs> that, that happens uh, over the course of time with this. So heavy metals have been researched uh, also in conjunction with this condition, and uh, clearly this is something that you and I deal with all the time and are always educating our clients about. Uh, it's a real problem, and our bodies were not designed to process the amount of, uh, of toxins and um, environmental pollutants that we are coming in contact with at this point. And the connection with, uh, uh, with these toxins that is quite critical in this disease is that they impair and uh, uh, destroy, if you will, uh, our vascular integrity and the endothelial cells in the, in the blood and the heart. And blood supply, both going in, the liver has a rather uh, um, complex uh, blood supply system, uh, unlike some of the other organs. So both going in to uh, help the liver with its filtration and with its tasks, as well as nutrients coming out to feed the body, the muscles, to energize uh, 
uh, and, and help us uh, live <laughs> in an optimal way. These all become impacted by the presence of heavy metals and, and uh, pollutants uh, impacting the integrity of the vascular and endothelial cells. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know that cadmium hardens the lining of the arteries, leading to high blood pressure and mm -hmm. an inability to flex and respond to stress or, or fight or flight or what have you. And then lead and, and mercury and cadmium can build up in the kidneys and promote high blood pressure, right. which will put stress on the whole blood filtration process of the liver. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. So um, as part of working with and assessing someone's risk or current status with this, this is, these, are, these are all major considerations that we have to be looking at. And, and what kind of testing should we consider for both adults and children if someone is curious to find out if perhaps if they kind of identify yeah. with any symptoms of, of poor liver function, what kind of testing could they do could I, to identify fatty liver disease? Yeah, there, there's some great, um, fairly standard testing that uh, can really help us understand a person's potential early uh, onset and or risk factors for developing the disease. Um, and again, in this industry, one of the greatest things we can do for people is help them understand that regular testing, no matter where they are, <laughs> uh, we'll talk specifically about this disease, uh, but just to make the point that regular testing and understanding what our burdens are and where our stresses and imbalances are occurring in our biochemistry is invaluable to preventing and or reversing disease, right? So we want to be looking at um, definitely uh, blood panels, uh, fairly standard, uh, the CBC, the metabolic, the lipid panels. In each of those panels, there are things that we want to be looking at uh, because, again, if there is damage to the immune function in the endothelial cells. We might see that show up in, in those panels. Uh, we want to be looking at liver enzymes, which are going to come through the metabolic panel. Uh, uh, our ALT and our GGT are a couple of the red flags uh, that show up when this disease is, is setting up and progressing. And then, of course, in the lipid panel, we're monitoring what's happening, especially with triglycerides, okay? Because in this disease, triglycerides are going to elevate. And we want to be keeping those triglycerides under about 100 in order to be in a healthy state. When they start to move over the level of 100, we're looking at, again, this storage of these fat cells and ineffective uh, breaking down of triglycerides into useful fatty acids and glycerol, which uh, these things are going to be used in the bloodstream to fuel the body with energy. Okay? And instead, they start to be stored in the liver, elevating the triglycerides. Um, we also want to look at methylation markers uh, because, again, we're, uh, we're in this consideration of what types of uh, toxic exposures we may be dealing with. And I think it's important to state, not to frighten people, but again, to educate that children not only receive toxins and heavy metals from the environment, they very frequently receive them from their parents in conception and in utero. Okay, And uh, we've done some work around uh, helping to educate people about how to clean up their bodies before a pregnancy and how to uh, prevent a lot of problems uh, through that means. So I think that's really critical to think about here. If, if there are parents listening who have concerns about their children, uh, to take this quite seriously in terms of, you know, what the exposures might have been and how they might help support their child to move them, right? So 
uh, methylation markers are going to, and we're talking biochemical markers, we're not talking genetic information here. Genetic information is useful, but it's not, uh, it's not going to tell us what the real-time function is of, of any pathway in the body. Okay? It's just going to tell us that we were born with potentially a weak area. And that exists from day one and goes to the last day that we're here. It doesn't necessarily mean that that, that, that variant is turned on and is malfunctioning. So uh, we look at that in the blood also uh, with markers like histamine, homocysteine, copper, zinc, and try to get an understanding of whether someone is properly breaking down and excreting their toxins and if not how we might support those functions in the body and bring them into a place where that switch is no longer uh, turned on but uh, can become turned off so we also want to be looking at vitamin d because it can uh, if we have deficiencies in vitamin d uh, that can be a preset for the development of diabetes uh, because vitamin D is uh, something that helps prevent insulin resistance, which of course is what diabetes is. Uh, then we also want to consider the use of the hair and tissue mineral analysis because it is an easy to do, relatively inexpensive task to give us a good assessment of uh, what kinds of heavy metal burdens uh, we're looking at, as well as uh, what our uh, mineral uptake is because minerals are hugely protective in this uh, condition as they are in many conditions. Let's talk about how this condition can be re reversed. So how can fatty liver disease be reversed? I'm sure the same techniques will help to prevent it. Um, but what are some of the management te techniques that you employ to prevent progression and increase the chances of reversing this condition? Yes, great question. Um, we are in this disease um, at the very top of the list in terms of reversing. And you're right, absolutely. Prevention, uh, all of these techniques we're going to talk about are essential for prevention. But uh, the, the, the reversal of um, this disease can really only happen up to a certain point of progression, okay? And once there has been um, too much progression, we don't have that opportunity anymore. So um, all of these are really critical, but absolutely most critical in, in managing and reversing is the regulation of blood sugar, okay? Blood sugar regulation is one of our major uh, homeostatic mechanisms. It's something that helps to keep all other metabolic functions uh, intact and uh, working at an optimal level. It is the number one goal. And that always brings me to nutrition, okay? And I, again, we're, uh, I, I am always focused on individualized nutrition. I, uh, clearly, there are lots of things in the nutrition world that are wonderful for almost anyone. But when you're working with very specific disease, you want to understand how an individual's body is metabolizing their food and help them develop a plan of eating that uh, approaches that and optimizes that. Because again, if someone thinks they're eating healthy and is overeating carbohydrates, even if they're healthy ones, or overeating protein for their body's needs, it can be a contributing factor here. So we've got to really hone in on, on what the nutritional needs are. Exercise, absolutely critical as well. The research uh, shows that um, uh, five times a week, 20 to 30 minutes. It does not need to be uh, intense or excessive. It just needs to be regular. And of course, we all know what the benefits of exercise are in terms of uh, moving toxins, helping the body to circulate, nourishing the cells, etc. And right? using up excess blood sugar that's floating in the bloodstream. Exactly. That's what yes. I'm always thinking when I'm... Uh... 
I'm exercising. I'm burning all that sugar I just ate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, whether it's, and, you know, rice that broke down into sugar or what have you. Exactly, exactly. It's, 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 our bodies were meant to move, and our bodies were meant to be outside in the, under the sunlight, right? Um, and all of these things are becoming quite compromised in our current way of living. Um, they just are. Uh, clearly, also, exercise is something that's going to uh, contribute to the optimization of weight. Um, blood sugar and uh, imbalanced uh, uh, or imbalances in weight are uh, always going to go hand in hand with each other, and it can go both directions. Okay, we don't want underweight any more than we want overweight. And I will um, tell you that I had the beginnings uh, of this problem uh, in my health crisis, and I was underweight, higher cholesterols, and having issues in fatty acid synthesis don't necessarily always go hand in hand with someone being overweight. So um, exercise and diet should be combined to individualize for someone to help them do the right thing for their body to either bring weight up or bring it down, okay? Because Hypoglycemia um, is something that is very frequently followed by hyperglycemia. And all of these things uh, can be optimized through these processes. Then we have detox. Um, we want to be using binders to pick up things that our bodies are not effectively breaking down and getting rid of. We want to be doing things like um, sauna therapy. And you clearly have... Uh, amazing resources for people for uh, uh, units in their home where the whole family can participate. You know, parents can teach children how to utilize something like this, where uh, in other countries that starts right out of the gate <laughs> for small children. It's, again, not something that we do as much of here. Um, and uh, using um, whatever individualized uh, protocols of detox support are appropriate for that person. Again, our testing is going to help us understand where the, where the system is failing to move things, what cofactors might need to be added to support the body to do a better job with it, um, and uh, what types of foods might be most helpful for that person given what their burdens are. And then we have um, a, a wonderful uh, set of things that can be super helpful very specifically in this condition um, uh, to help reverse it. One of the major problems with the disease is that we have um, uh, cellular fibrosis going on in the liver. Uh, rather than having nice, plump, uh, pliable uh, cells and tissues, we start to get hardening. And uh, clearly, there's also a lot of cellular death going on. If uh, fat cells are taking over and healthy cells are dying, we can also have problems with moving that debris out of the way, the elevation of the enzymes in the liver that are red flagging us for uh, um, cellular damage. Okay, So a number of the things that we end up using, and I have used very successfully for people, uh, are things that are going to um, help soften and uh, reverse fibrosis. Before we get to the point of cell death, uh, helping to heal that cellular membrane. So um, a couple of these are uh, phosphatidylcholine, uh, which is a uh, creates healthy uh, cell membranes is is comprised of phosphorus, fatty acid, and glycerol, um, and it is something that also increases uh, hepatic mitochondrial respiration. So um, it not only can be very healing to the uh, membranes of the cells in the liver but encourage uh, uh, mitochondrial activity, which is going to produce uh, ATP, which is an energy source for everything, <laughs> every, every part of our body, every cell. Um, it also has antioxidant uh, qualities, along with vitamin E. 
um, super antioxidant and is going to support um, uh, the healing of that uh, fibrosis as well. Uh, reishi, uh, which is one of our medicinal mushrooms, is fantastic in this condition. Uh, it's also antioxidant. It is uh, something that is immune modulating, so it's going to help uh, in that area we were talking about of, of damage to uh, the vascular system and the endothelial cells. Um, it is um, something that is uh, what we call adaptogenic as well, which helps on the mind-body level, on the stress level. Uh, uh, liver conditions are very often associated with, stressful liver conditions are, are very often associated with high emotion, anger, frustration, depression, uh, a lot of uh, sense of being spun up. And Rishi has a fantastic adaptogenic uh, impact upon, so hitting a lot of different areas. Um, with vitamin E, also, I often like to, uh, to add either uh, some, some type of uh, bile support, um, because it does uh, encourage um, bile production. And um, so I'll often add uh, ox bile or uh, bile acids or something like that in tandem with uh, vitamin E. Selenium, one of the most powerful minerals in this condition. And a lot of us know that selenium and vitamin E are kissing cousins. They they, they help one another and they're better absorbed when they're taken together. So there's some synergy that we really want to be looking at here uh, as we design a, a program to help someone heal from this condition. So okay. can you talk to us about your thoughts on uh, coffee enemas and liver flushing for helping to reverse fatty liver disease? Well, yes. Um, th there are the coffee enema is something that I recommend very, very regularly uh, because it is going to support the body in uh, uh, in increasing bile production. And again, bile we didn't we didn't necessarily hit specifically on this uh, earlier, but bile is critical in this scenario because it is emulsifying fat okay and carrying toxins out of the body and if we have low bile um, we're also not breaking down cholesterols cholesterols are rising oftentimes unfortunately people are uh, being given uh, drugs to lower them that uh, destroy their coq10 levels coq10 is another thing we might end up using um, so adequate bile production um, is critical to the emulsification of the fats in the diet, to the synthesis and the breakdown of cholesterols to be turned into useful nutrients to be sent out into the body for fueling the body and for proper detoxification through the bowel. Okay, so coffee enema is phenomenal uh, for uh, supporting in that uh, arena. Um, there are so many foods and herbs and things that can also uh, help in that department. Cholagogic foods like artichoke, beets, beets green, beet greens, uh, milk thistle, dandelion. Um, uh, there are a multitude of wonderful supplements that are going to nourish and help the liver do what it needs to, to do and to have, again, um, really rich and clean and uh, supportive blood flow coming in and going out. And then what about liver flushes like the Andrea Moritz and, and other different versions of liver flushing? How do those help reverse fatty liver disease? Well, my opinion on liver flushes is that we need to stabilize people before we do liver flushes. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in them. I believe they are uh, very important. Um, my clients are doing them. Uh, but for me in this situation, and especially 
uh, with an understanding of how far the disease may have progressed. We want to do all of those basic stabilizations first and be sure that we have some adequate methylation response going on in the body because sometimes in a in a in a cleanse we can throw things into the system that the, the system is not prepared to handle so it has a place and it's up to a very skilled practitioner uh, to understand the person's status and what needs to be done before they take on um, something like that but uh, when it's time it's a fantastic move to make, and people typically feel fantastic with doing it. So yeah. it is a recommendation that I make at the right time. Yeah, agree. Because someone has multiple health conditions, diagnoses, they're very ill, or they have an active infection. You need to be careful. You don't want to be, you know, doing this right. flush, which you know can be, you know, very taxing on the body. It's just a very you know, you're just releasing a lot of stuff from your body and, uh, you know, people need to be ready yeah. for that, for sure. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I've seen, unfortunately, too many times on this level is, again, because the liver uh, is the major storage space for CYP enzymes, if there are um, a lot of petrochemicals and or a lot of uh, or excess estrogens in the body. This is something that can get really dumped out and the enzymes are not there in adequate uh, supply to actually work with the situation because CYP is absolutely critical for those. Uh, you and I have talked about these before, estrogens, plastics, petrochemicals, perfumes, uh, kind of all in that, in, in that category. So that's something that I'm always cautious about and wanting to see that the liver is beginning to do a better job uh, with all of its tasks before we throw uh, a cleanse into the mix. Yeah, that's very, very good advice. So let's talk mm -hmm. about, you know, transgenerational toxicity. And if a parent has fatty liver disease, can they then pass this on to their child? Or how likely is their child to get it that they conceive? Good question. Um, so the passing on of toxins and, of course, of genetic information uh, are a couple of different things. Um, the passing on of toxins is something, uh, in some cases, that might be easier to deal with. There is one genetic uh, variant that is uh, a very high predictor for heritable uh, fatty liver disease, and that is the PNPLA3. It is most um, uh, predominant in the Hispanic population at about 49%. Uh, it occurs in about 23% of Caucasians and Europeans and about 17% of African Americans. Um, the, the predictability of sharing the disease with that gene variant is about 72%, which makes epigenetics even more important, okay? And this is where we have to really focus in on um, families helping each other with honest information, um, understanding, you know, what the risk might be for the, for the genetic preset. But also, if a parent has developed the disease, being very... Um, ready to be honest about that and help their child understand how to prevent the development of the disease. Of course, in families, people are often eating the same way. Uh, if parents have had bad uh, eating habits and, and uh, developed some of these conditions, um, it, it's, you know, the burden is on them to help their children understand how to get outside and move, how to get in, in the kitchen, all the studies show that children who are in the kitchen with their parents creating healthy food have healthier lifestyles across the entire span of their lives than children whose families are just getting the food on the table and they're sitting down uh, to have it. Education conversation.
communication, moving, being together. All of these things are um, uh, in, in that uh, territory of epigenetic uh, curiosity that we want to be looking at to help prevent this from moving down the generational line. Yes. Well, yeah, very, very good advice. We have to be responsible and teach our children to eat healthy. And it can be really challenging. <laughs> you get a lot of pushback from your family, but you can lead a horse to water, but you, uh, you know, can't always make them drink. But I always do my best to gently advise and nudge my, my family, my child as best that I can. And then yeah, hopefully that will stick. Like my father did with me. My father was always educating me about health and exercise and diet and making yeah. healthy food. And today I'm doing the same thing with, with my audience as well. So mm -hmm. it, that, it does work. Even though their child doesn't always seem like they're listening, it is making a huge impact on them. And what I'll say to parents my kids are now long gone from home and grown. Uh, they had their rebellion around this information as well, but it sticks. It, it, it returns to them in a time when they have a lot more responsibility for holding their entire lives, right? And they go back and they remember. And so don't be discouraged if... <laughs> You're, you're in a phase, and, and children are, of course, they're social beings, and they're out living in a culture where foods are very unhealthy, um, and uh, they like those things, and they want to have them like other children do. I don't think there's a kid in the world who isn't like that and doesn't go through those phases, but if you are sharing and you are... Um, you're walking the talk <laughs> and talking the walk. <laughs> uh, they're going to remember it and they're, they're going to have memories of the participation that they had with their parent uh, in other times and it will come back to benefit them for sure. Yes, absolutely. And so you work with a client to help to reverse fatty liver disease, among many other things. You're a, a very gifted health practitioner. Tell us where we can learn more about your work and work with you. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, I appreciate the compliment, um, especially coming from you. Um, I am at www.truenaturehealthconsulting.com. Uh, uh, there is a uh, a tab for articles on my website. There is a, a detailed article about fatty liver disease there, um, information on my services. Um, I am very happy to receive people who might need to investigate this and, and go forward with a, an intelligent plan. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So guys, check that out. And think again, Thank you so much for tuning in to the Myers Detox podcast where we talk about all different things related to heavy metal and chemical detoxification and all of the different health conditions that are promoted and outright caused by heavy metals and chemicals. So thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys very, very soon.